on. Solicitor Goff, are you are you camera ready? I'm right here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, great. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure um, if um, you've been having uh, the budget folks go first uh, and do their um, individual yes. stuff. Okay. Yeah, and, I'll, yeah, so and I'll wait for that. We'll go first and then it will be yours. The floor will be yours. Great. Thanks. All right. No problem. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, honorable members of council, Mayor's Chief of Staff, Tanny Washington, uh, to the Council Chief of Staff, Dan Walker, department heads, and members of the public. We are here this evening for law department's budget hearing. I would first like to start by recognizing members of the Finance Committee for attendance by doing roll call. Vice Chair Harley, 4th District. Present. Councilwoman Oliver, 3rd District. Council Member Field, 8th District. <clears throat> Council, uh, at large Council Member Spadola. Present. At large Council Member Walsh. Here. Council President Congo. I'll right. also then like to um, move to. Uh, other council persons in attendance by doing a roll call. Uh, first district council member Gray. Present. Second district council member Darby. Present. Fifth district council member Fields. Here. Sixth district council member McCoy. At large council member Cabrera. Present. At large, Council Member Dixon. All right. um, and last call again for Council Member Oliver, 3rd District. Council Member Field, 8th District. Council President Congo. Councilman Field, I do have you down as being present. Thank you. Um, I then would like to recognize um, uh, Robert Goff, the city attorney, uh, Rose Tassone, also from law department, Tibet Lane. Um, oh, and we also have Robert Greco from OMB and Daniel Owens uh, from Office and Management and Budget. As well as we do have other panelists who have joined us this evening and members of the public. Uh, before I turn it over to Mr. Owens for a budget overview, of the law department, I would like to inform everyone that public comments will be held at the end of the uh, law department's hearing, as it has been throughout this budget process. Uh, we look forward to participation from members of the public, and public comment is limited to three minutes. If there's any follow up information during the budget hearings, Ms. Marshall Bassnight from City Council will track and follow up on these requests. I ask that my colleagues, if you have any questions, use the raise hand feature. And now at this time, Mr. Owens, I will turn it over to you for the financial overview of the, of the Law Department's fiscal year 22 proposed budget, followed by City Solicitor um, Robert Goff and his team uh, will be doing a question and answer session with Council. The floor is yours, Mr. Owens. All right, thank you once again, and good evening, uh, Chairman Johnson um, and other honorable members of City Council. Uh, thank you for inviting me to present the Law Department's uh, fiscal year 2022 proposed budget request on behalf of the Office of Management and Budget. Funding for the Law Department is derived solely from the general fund. The Law Department is requesting a total budget of $2.54 million. This represents a decrease of nearly $7,000 or 0.3%. Personal services remain relatively flat compared to FY 2021 and are budgeted at just under $2.1 million 
a decrease of only $539 in total from FY 2021. Through the biannual appeals process, both legal assistant one positions were upgraded from uh, bargaining unit NUC grade M to bargaining unit NUC grade N. The total cost of these upgrades is roughly $2,900. Regular salaries increased $14,000 or 1%. This increase was more than offset by a decrease in hospitalization down nearly $21,000 from FY 2021. Total ms and &E costs are budgeted at $426,000, a decrease of $7,100 or 1.6%. Much of this decrease may be, can be attributed to decreases in travel, as well as the furniture, fixtures, and office equipment account lines which are down $2,300 and $2,000 respectively. Legal fees, which represents 63% of the law department's total ms &E budget, remains unchanged at $270,000 in FY 2022. This includes my presentation for the proposed budget request for the law department. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time, and thank you. Um, I don't believe there's any questions for you, Mr. Owen. So, so thank you very much. Great, thank you. Okay. And, and Attorney Goff, um, the floor is now yours. If you'd like to give a brief opening statement before we go into the question. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, Council Member Gray has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in the previous budget hearing, I had asked if the um, suits with the deceased from the family of the deceased fire woman and the suit between the mayor and the former treasurer had been resolved because we were told that um, all the suits, none of them had exceeded the deduction of the insurance. So I was wondering if those two had been resolved yet. And I was told to ask the law department. Well, is that an OMB question? Mr. Owens, is this a question that OMB can answer or is this more for a uh, this one, I would definitely defer to the city solicitor as well as the chief of staff on this one. Okay, so we will save that for Attorney Goff, uh, Ms. Gray, once we start the hearing. Okay, so you know we'll let um, uh, Attorney Goff and give his opening statement, and then we can go into the question and answer. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, the floor is yours. All right. Um, First of all, uh, good evening, uh, Chairman Johnson, Vice Chair Harley, uh, President Congo, and all the members of the Finance Committee that are present, as well as any other members of Council and attendants and members of the public. I appreciate the time that you've given me and the Law Department so that we can present our fiscal year uh, 2022 budget. Um, and uh, I look forward to engaging with you individually in questions, as well as uh, um, discussing tonight uh, what we plan to do. Um, I, I know I heard Councilwoman Gray um, ask that question previously, so I'm going to um, alleviate her suspense and, and let her know that both of those matters have been settled and concluded. Uh, but uh, let me move past that and finish my opening statement, and I'll take any further questions about that as well. Um, if, I, if, I, if I could, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, my law department's administrator, that's Javette Lane. She's on the Line here to help me with the figures and numbers and keep me straight with that. And uh, of course, I have to have my uh, right hand um, uh, person, uh, Deputy City Solicitor Rose Tassoni Donardo, with, without whom I could really not be operating this department uh, nearly as well as I am. Uh, and uh, so I appreciate their attendance tonight uh, and uh, I thank them. Um, uh, last year, um, the challenge that we had was to operate um, a slimmer department before the full brunt of the coronavirus pandemic fell upon our municipal government. Uh, we successfully weathered uh, the year and face new challenges as the nation and the city begin to emerge and recover. As a result, this budget of the law department remains slim. 
in fact, somewhat uh, slimmer because we've done a, even more belt tightening as, as uh, Mr. Owen observed with regard to uh, some of our lines. Even so, the goals of the law department remain very much the same and you would expect them to. And that is to bring to the city's uh, service legal professionals with the capacity and the desire to meet each issue, dispute and hurdle facing the city and to assist the city in its component parts, boards, commissions uh, in their day-to-day -day legal uh, operations. So um, I think that's uh, with regard to that, uh, that is our departmental vision as stated here. Um, uh, at I think slide three, I think we can move to. Uh, yes, I believe we're into question number uh, one. All right, so um, that sounds fine. Let me go to so, question so, number one. All right. Yes, um, so COVID, well, and I just want to preface it that the COVID, I, I actually looked at the budget payout and uh, payroll expenses. I didn't notice law department on there. So is it is true that law departments did not have a budget hit line due to COVID? We didn't take any money from the CARES funds. There was no expenditures that came out of, I mean, there's things we used um, that were provided by other departments, like this Zoom thing, we have our own Zoom account, but that was a different department. But the short answer is that there are no um, CARES funds that we, we used. Okay, great. And that means there's no uh, staff who I guess, um, I guess leave attributed to COVID? It's, this is all citywide, yep. Okay, all right, excellent. Um, and in the future for 2022, yeah. there are expected account headline. So are we, um, or still at question number one? Yes, just for yeah, the VRAC, you know, CARES Act. Funding. Right. I mean, there is nothing. I expect the same um, process to take place. I don't think the law department's operation will change uh, in any way that affects is a would would involve CARES funding. So we have not budgeted that. All right. Um, now we can turn to question number two, Attorney Goff. Um, if, uh, in anticipating receiving American Rescue funds similar to other apartments we've asked about kind of the vision, the plan, or I guess in your direct case, you would be the one that would be interpreting for the city. So do we have any, I guess, updates about um, where they can be used uh, and how to use it? And then how would you plan to, you know, have it benefit the law department? Well, um, we don't have any guidance. The guidance is supposed to come out very shortly before um, the money is actually dispensed, which I believe is the deadline of May 11th, 2021. So um, there's nothing beyond what the statute says. Um, if there's a revenue loss, uh, we're supposed to be able to capture that. The law department doesn't collect revenue uh, in a traditional sense. So we don't suffer from revenue loss. Um, now, we naturally tighten our belts whenever revenue is down because that's just the way things are, as we have done over the last two years uh, as a result this year and the year before as a result of COVID-19. But in terms of programs of the law department that are based upon uh, American rescue uh, funds, we have not identified any because um, it doesn't it's not apparent from from the uh, legislation itself and uh, we haven't received any guidance that would sort of invite us to do to do that okay thank you very much attorney Goff. uh <clears throat> moving to question number three um considering the city's recent uh, decline no, oh sorry i can't i can't uh okay council member walsh Thank you. Just very quickly. You said you didn't collect revenue. Um, and I know you have not been doing this for the last year because of COVID, but who gets credit for the share sale revenue? Well, that's revenue that's the water department or taxes or license inspection, whatever debt is a lien on the property, um, that would be credited toward that department. We simply are 
um, to the extent that we're involved in it, their collection agent. So um, we help them collect their rent. Okay. Just wondered you got the credit for it. Thank you. That's all. All right. You're, you're welcome, council member. Thank you for the question. All right. And uh, moving on to question number three, attorney Goff, just um, going into the, the, um, the legal requirements um, to ensure that employees working remotely um, and that you know, finance department is properly withholding uh, taxes. Right. So withholding is is required for anyone, uh, any employer in the city. Um, and so uh, what we've done based upon the law is we've um, come to our own conclusion. And also uh, we spoke to outside counsel as well. Uh, and confirmed, oh, no, wait a minute. And confirmed uh, that um, this would be the process that we would use. And essentially what it means is that we want to just keep an eye on um, employees, employers that are certifying that uh, their uh, employee is working outside of the city because they have to. Um, if I it's, got it. If, if it's discretionary uh, and uh, if they have, if they can work in the city or outside of the city, then uh, based upon the guidance we've issued, was showing me work. that would be um, uh, considered to be employment uh, in the city and taxable for the wage tax. So that's what this uh, this uh, provision or this uh, guidance that I've so, written here. So the attorney got that's a lot of legal language. <laughs> I was going to break it down for folks. Uh, so essentially, are you are you saying that um, based on a current guidance from the IRS and the finance department, um, it's a requirement of working home as a condition as a well, condition we necessary. Like it has to be required, not voluntary. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. And it, has um, to be, and it has to be certified by the employee in each case, and it has to be certified by the employer in each case. Okay. And this is, uh, I guess, so far, it, it's been upheld. Uh, there hasn't been any legal challenges to this yet? Not yet. Okay. Because right. um, that's something, obviously, both me and many council members have a question about where the city, you know, um, what, what we're looking at. And uh, I think uh, hopefully that will put some of the questions I know my colleagues had at ease, um, knowing that there is at least some form of guidance. Um, um, and you and there's also stuff on the uh, finance department's webpage. Uh, you might want to look under the uh, um, FAQ that uh, Director uh, Brett Taylor has put up there. Um, it's helpful it was uh, put together with uh, the assistance of the law department as well as uh, um, uh, consultants both accounting and legal outside of uh, the city going we'll into you know, several of my colleagues have and we hear employers holding big group workshops talking about how to you know get around this issue so um you know, this is obviously uh, as as necessary. If law department and finance can update council on this issue, it would, it would be very important. Um, so we know exactly how much you know we have to spend. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much for taking yeah. us through that. Um, all right. Uh, moving to question number four. Solicitor Goff, we could just go over um, the current vacant positions and the time frame for filling? Um, as of today, we uh, have one vacant position uh, and uh, that has been for about four and a half months. Um, we have been interviewing the, for that position and have interviewed some candidates. They are under consideration right now and we should be able to uh, reach a decision with regard to those uh, interviews in the next uh, month. Um, and uh, just, I guess the cats are out of bag um, due to the, I guess, the uh, new move of uh, Mrs. West, Miss West. Uh, I guess there's another vacancy, right? I guess we right. can come in. HR has robbed us of yet another great attorney. Uh, they did it previously with Tara, and now they're doing it with Taylor. So we congratulate Taylor on this uh, great job opportunity uh, for her. Um, and uh, we congratulate HR for... Um, our loss is their gain. 
So that, as of next week, will be uh, a second spot that we're going to have to. Uh, Can you anticipate uh, how long do you think it'll take to fill that position? Um, well, we've had, um, it took a while for us to fill um, a couple of positions uh, previously, although the last one was not so long. Um, and I think it's because we've, um, or I've aggressively and we've aggressively been trying to use the merit system to, um, to um, appropriately increase our wages since um, based upon comparable studies, um, our city attorneys are not paid quite as well as um, folks over the county or even people in the city. So I, it's hard to guess how long it will take. We're hopeful that we'll be able to fill the position as soon as possible. The good thing, uh, if there is a good thing about losing a valued employee, is that she's moving from our department to another, so we don't have to wait for any vacation time uh, or leave for to fill the spot. So as soon as we have a good candidate, we'll be able to fill it, and we'll be putting out our, uh, our uh, advertisements for that within the week. Thank you very much. Um, moving on to question number five. Can you discuss any proposed changes to positions, uh, new position, deleted, uh, and title and salary changes? Um, well, I sort of did uh, to some extent. Um, the, if you could, um, basically, um, the only program we have for increasing um, uh, the salaries for, of our uh, employees uh, to retain them uh, is through the annual merit increase. Um, so it is our hope that given the fact that we're not going to lose any funding, uh, excuse me, we're not going to lose revenue because of the um, American Rescue Act, uh, that we'll be able to continue to uh, have appropriate annual increases uh, for our attorneys that uh, can be regularly anticipated. That is something that's really important if you're going to be able to keep uh, and attract lawyers. Um, and I guess specifically, you know, in all, all departments use less get asked this question, especially as support for law department. Uh, what about the, the, the work to actually retain, recruit and retain diverse attorneys? Um, so let's see, is that, what slide are we on here? I wanna, if we can move to the next slide, that might be helpful for me. Okay, so that is not helpful to me. Um, let me, um, so basically what we're gonna try to do, what we always try to do uh, is we've been trying to um, interview every applicant uh, and consider um, um, any disadvantaged applicants based upon minority status or past discrimination. So we um, um, have not had as many of those applicants as we would like. I think I was in front of you last year um, telling you basically the same thing. And that is that we hope for there to be more. Um, and our plan was to be involved in the diversity, um, Delaware State Bar Association diversity um, um, job fair. However, that didn't happen uh, last year. Uh, and uh, we are, however, enrolled in it this year. So we're looking forward to interviewing uh, candidates for positions who are interested uh, in at, at the time of that um, uh, uh, program in uh, July of this year. So we're signing yeah. and looking forward to it. And then what about, um, I guess, uh, does the law department still make use of the interim program? And is, has that been considered as a way to maybe increase diversity? I know in the past it was. Is this a way, uh, have you been using an interim program? Well, it's been difficult to get interns because interns are generally not paid. Uh, and in recent years, it's been difficult to do that. But uh, we certainly would be happy to consider it and uh, add it to our list of strategies in order to increase diversity. Okay. Um, and, and so is that recently they weren't paid? Um, I believe historically there was a small account line to have a paid internship. Um, did that, when did that go away? Before I got here, because there wasn't, there was no interns paid or otherwise uh, during that time frame. Okay. Um, 
I just wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy. I don't know if Miss Lane could chime in. I, there used to be an account line for a paid internship position, at right? One, yeah, at, at one time, um, there were some paid interns in the office, but we have not had a paid intern for at least the last two and a half, three years. Just after you left, Chris, I think some of that went away. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, all right, thank you very much for that recap. And I, I look forward to seeing the reports from the diversity job fair. Uh, as, I, as I do, I've heard a lot of great things about it uh, being revamped this year. Um, so I'm excited to see what the results will be. Um, <clears throat> turning to question number six, can you discuss the plan use of the $270,000 budgeted for legal fees? And I see a breakdown chart. Yeah, so this is the same figures that we had last year. Um, I guess um, our experience has been that sometimes it's not quite enough and sometimes it's a little bit too much, but the $270,000 figure seems to work fairly well. Um, what is um, a big piece of it? Uh, is uh, labor negotiations. Um, labor uh, is uh, somewhat unpredictable. However, there are a number of uh, union contracts that uh, are in negotiation right now, and we use the service of uh, specialized um, attorneys uh, it's, who've been pretty successful um, with regard to our claims and our negotiations. Um, and uh, so Adam, here, look. Yeah. So that so that is a, a big piece of of it. Uh, occasionally, we have to engage in real estate transactions and have deeds and other documents uh, filed that are best done by specialists in that regard. So we use uh, that for real estate, and sometimes there are complex transactions. Um, so these are um, lines that we need for those for those purposes, and uh, they are the same as they were last year. Uh, just, just off the top, if you had to figure, how, how much was the, I know labor negotiations, a big part, approximately how much was spent on the litigation, uh, I guess, with the fire department? Just because I remember reading about it, I was actually kind of taken aback. Well, the wow. fire department, the fire department litigation, I believe, came out of the risk management line. Um, and it, I don't know the top, the uh, the total figure. Um, I'll be happy to, to supply that to you. It, um, but uh, it was a lot uh, because there were a lot of defendants in 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 the matter, and each one uh, needed to be represented. Uh, past mayors, past uh, police chiefs, uh, individual individuals. So um, each one had to be defended. So uh, even if we hadn't used uh, outside counsel for one of them, we would have had to use them for um, all, for a, a number of others. Uh, so that came out of the risk management line. And, uh, not okay, then the, the negotiate, I guess not negotiation, the, I guess it, what account line was the dispute regarding the firefighter contract with the city? And the oh, the firefighter. Did, um, did, that come, did that come out of now law department budget? Negotiation, uh, a lot of the negotiation came out of the law department budget and it actually on uh, and pushed us over uh, the 270 mark for one year. Um, and some of it came out of risk management because there was lit litigation that was involved in it. Okay, and I believe there's chance recorded involved and a lot of different, I mean, uh, can you, I remember reading and I was surprised, was it over $250,000? I'm, I'm sure it was. Okay. Okay. Um, and is there, I, 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 I guess, because I believe, I remember there was, there was, I guess, that and then a large legal bill uh, attached to the, I guess, dispute with the treasurer's office. Is there a way, uh, is there an early mediation process that law departments started to engage in to try to decrease some of these legal costs? Well, mediation is something that we uh, work on it and consider um, in um, bargaining matters uh, whenever there's uh, um, impasse that's required. So um, mediation was used in the chancery court uh, action involving the former treasurer. Uh, and that was attempted, uh, former uh, judge Bill Chapman um, 
graciously uh, provided his assistance. Uh, it was not successful at the stage when he was involved, um, but, uh, but he uh, put forward his best efforts and we uh, were involved in that. So we did use mediation with regard to that as well. And uh, we also used, uh, have, have used mediation in some of our um, civil uh, lawsuits uh, where the city is being sued. Um, so we use it um, quite frequently and appropriately. Okay, okay. Um, I, I appreciate that overview. And, and can you, uh, the breakdown of vendors uh, who, I guess, uh, serve the city? I believe that's another slide. Okay, so can we move to the, um, so these are some, uh, we were asked about contracts. We don't really have contracts uh, in the sense of things that bind us to use particular individuals. Um, what we have is a, a sort of at will retentions and you know, engagement letters. Um, and the ones that we have relationships with right here are uh, the ones that uh, uh, come from our budget. Uh, Baird Mandelas, uh, we've used for uh, real estate in the past, although frankly, we haven't used them much uh, recently. Uh, we tend, okay. We've been tending to do a lot of our real estate in house. Um, Eckert Siemens, uh, we used in the reassessment case. Uh, and Young Conaway, Stargat, and Taylor was again uh, something that we uh, used uh, in uh, negotiations with Bill Bowser, helping us out there and doing really great work for us. Um, so those are the folks that, that we have. And the ongoing, uh, ongoing use. Yeah. Um, as you, as you can see, since we're not bound to folks by contract, we can always, uh, you know, turn on a dime. Uh, and, um, you know, when we, we can, we don't, there's no reason to leave um, lawyers and firms that are doing a good job for us and getting good results. And we don't want to to do that, but um, we are free to go to others, uh, vendors out there. So um, in doing that, you know, we negotiate the uh, fees, we keep the costs down, we get discounts on uh, the regular hourly fees, their attorneys uh, charge. Um, so uh, we're just continuing to do that uh, all the time. Okay. Um, and now as a breakdown, are any of these uh, vendors DBEs? Well, um, so the answer to that question, if you move to the next slide here for me, someone, whoever's doing that. Uh, well, let's see if I can pull it up here. Can we have the next slide? Yeah. Can we have the next slide? Whoever's doing the slides. A. It was a previous, previous slide. There was a previous slide. I thought so. Um, and I think there was a previous slide to that, was there not? All right. Um, well, maybe not. I'm sorry, Bob. Actually, it's the next slide. Uh, Thank you. 6B. Yeah. So specific, specify vendors of any that are DBAs, and if there are none, um, share a comprehensive plan to attract them. Um, so the law department's vendors are, uh, are all law firm. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, um, none of them are DBs as defined by our code. Um, our code is very specific in what constitutes a DBA and has several component pieces to it. Um, so what I've done is, um, I, I sort of did a, a sort of looked around uh, through our firms and, and basically found that I, the firms are, are about 30% gender uh, are women. Um, it's not, I mean, the percentage of uh, racial minorities is relatively small. Uh, it's, and when you look around, it's, it's difficult to find uh, a lot of that. But when we do uh, look for firms, what we're looking for um, is we're looking for firms that do things that, that our department can't do, um, that, you know, perhaps we can't do as well. Like uh, if you're in a chancery court, action, the chancery court needs um, very specific service and it needs it speedily uh, and it needs it 
uh, done um, in a way that uh, that they that these firms can perform it. Um, so the um, the use of DVEs to um, with regard to professional services is uh, difficult to accomplish because it isn't put together uh, in such a way that um, we uh, can readily uh, utilize it. Uh, but that having been said, um, to the extent that we can discover firms that uh, are diverse, that have the attributes, some or all of the attributes of a DVE, we're happy to use their services. Um, I'm looking, when I look for those firms, it's hard to find. So I invite those firms uh, that qualify, that have 50% or more of uh, disadvantaged in individuals who own and operate and manage those firms um, to come to us and say, uh, we can do your, we can do a really good job on, on these things. Because as I said, with regard to the earlier question, you know, we don't have contracts that bind us to whoever, whomever. We have, we can turn and give business to whoever uh, is out there. So um, we want to give it to local firms. Uh, we want to give it to firms that um, have diverse uh, populations of attorneys. And we want to give it to firms that have programs to um, attract diversity. Now, to be honest with you, all these firms that we're talking about do have those programs, um, and they too struggle to um, bring in folks who represent the broad uh, gamut of people that live in our city. Uh, that's our struggle here at the law department. It's their struggle, and it's also our struggle in terms of, of um, attracting vendors to compete for the jobs that we need them to do. Okay. Um, I appreciate that thorough overview, and I know, you know, we've gone over this uh, last year, and I'm there talking about this issue, and it's, um, I think, in line with what we've talked about with other departments, we, we're going to have a comprehensive overview of the DBE program and how we can increase it, the effectiveness in the city. So, um, you know, I hope law department is on board. I, I, I do understand the struggles, um, and, and certainly... I'm aware of them. The challenge is, of course, the legal uh, practice area. So uh, this is something uh, that, that I would like, you know, and I know council, my colleagues have stressed this, is we would like this effort and making sure that the firms we do engage are at least helping solve this problem. Um, yeah. Participating um, in racial justice, you know, just things like that where they can make an impact in a community, even if they're not led by the racial attorneys. I agree. Although, I mean, some of our firms have made some progress. Um, Richard's uh, Leighton Finger, um, one of the oldest, uh, most establishment firms that we use, um, has had a president who's uh, female and African-American um, who's their presiding officer. So that's uh, certainly a step in the right direction. Um, but it's just a first step, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> And turning to question number seven, I'd like to, can you discuss the legal fees that have a budget, budget by impact of approximately $1.8 million among these different departments? Right, so, so basically um, most of these are dictated by the departments themselves. Um, in other words, we have traditionally and historically allowed the departments uh, with regard to their individual um, specific needs uh, to budget certain amount for uh, outside counsel. Risk management uh, has uh, presented estimates to us and, and we've uh, approved those. And we came up with the $660,000 figure. The balance of them are all really from the individual departments, whether we're talking about city council, um, the general fund is $75,000 that the uh, city council has requested. Um, and the CT CVT, this is for the television station. Uh, and uh, I think that the council has come on board and uh, given uh, 
viewpoints and opinions and also some training to council with regard to the CVT commission, or maybe not council, but the CVT commission, which falls under the council's um, shield. Uh, and uh, the balance of these are really um, figures that each department has uh, come up with. The water sewer fund works, um, that relates uh, to um, estimates for um, the dispute with Newcastle County over uh, our wastewater uh, services um, that we've been, you know, struggling with them for a couple of years now. Uh, it also involves the um, dispute over stormwater fees uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, for which, uh, you know, the law department is uh, involved in the uh, oversight of that litigation. Uh, but, um, and so these fees related to estimates of what uh, that would be. Um, so uh, finance, again, this is collection. I think I was asked about um, um, collection revenue uh, and what, we're, what kind of revenue we collect. Well, again, this is the finance department. They uh, have the involvement of a collection firm with regard to uh, water uh, and use that. And they also do that with regard to um, uh, some of their uh, um, other fees. So uh, that's what all of these are about. So, um, yes, the answer is the same as before. Um, are any of these uh, outside agencies, DBEs that you're aware of? Well, I wasn't aware of any, but um, Mr. Rob uh, tells me uh, in a recent email I found um, with regard to risk management, the, the firm of Heckler, Heckler and Fabrizio are a majority female owned. Um, they also um, are proud of a diversity um, program uh, that they have where they are um, recruiting uh, uh, racial minorities, uh, African-American, Asian-American, Latino, uh, non-racial minorities like LGBTQ folks. And uh, of course they have uh, management and ownership uh, is uh, in a majority uh, uh, female. So I think to, to a, it, it fulfills the spirit of the uh, DBE, um, so, um, DBE so have, have we followed, have we, has there been development with, I know we've discussed this, um, about, about an actual reporting requirement for all vendors legally related to annually certify or report out as to what their diversity efforts are. Um, is there more thought towards doing that? As I probably discussed with you, Attorney Golf, we had a similar Ooh. with the state where it's just annual. It's not, it's just if you're a city contractor, you report annually in January what your diversity efforts were through the year. And is there, has there been work on that or, or no? Well, I, I think that I'm, I'm not sure there's been any work on it. I can tell you that I have reviewed all um, all, all of the um, websites with regard to um, the firms, Young Conaway, uh, Morris, um, Richard, um, Heckler Fabrizio, all these uh, uh, firms, and uh, all of them have um, uh, minority outreach. Um, and uh, are seeking diversity. Um, so I am aware of that generally. We could certainly ask them to provide um, a specific uh, list of their efforts uh, as part of that. And, and that's something I, I actually would like to see in going forward with the Finance Committee, um, a presentation on that. Um, because it's something I know we, we have talked about. And it's a fairly easy tweak. You know, we just ask them, what did they do in the past year? Because um, I understand the challenges in industry, but at least we need to, you know, the public to see that there's been progress with these firms because, you know, they've been having these issues not for like a few years. It's been, it's, it's an entrenched issue. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you're a systemic issue. Um, I, I'm trying to think of different ways we, we can kind of move the ball forward. Um, I certainly don't want um, this to be a problem 20 years from now, you know, 
Um, but it continues to be a persistent problem, especially in the legal industry in Delaware specifically, which is unique than other legal industries in our surrounding area. Um, it I is. It part is. Of Philadelphia probably does not have the same problem. <laughs> um, it is a problem. Yeah. So now I turn it to there's a few questions actually from council members. Council member Walsh. Um, thank you. I just have one question right now. Uh, could you please remind me of what the starting salary is uh, for somebody, an attorney in your department? Well, that would depend uh, on um, their level of experience. Uh, it would depend on whether they uh, are barred in the state of Delaware. Um, and But the range of beginning salaries um, that we've um, that we have hired people at uh, here has ranged anywhere from eighty, approximately eighty thousand dollars to um, somewhat over ninety thousand um, dollars, like like ninety thousand dollars. That has been our our starting range, depending on experience and and the position that they're starting. And does it, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. And does that include? Um, the benefits attached to that? Well, I don't think so. I mean, the benefits, whenever you have benefits, they that always adds value. I, I don't really know what, what that would be if you were to calculate that in. Okay, thank you. That's without no. benefits. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Council Member Fields? Yes, hi. Um, hi, Mr. Golf. Hi, Ms. Laney. How are you? My hey, question. Member. Hi. My question to you is the water you said for risk management, um, water sewer um, fund, public works, the legal fees is five hundred thousand. Now, um, I know that we're you know we're going to well we're ha we're in litigation with um, with Newcastle County, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we have that law. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm yes. asking. Chair, can I? Okay, so yes, um, let me get to my question. My question is that five hundred, that five hundred thousand dollars, is that going to be a part of the money? Is that going to be included in the money that they pay us back once you know once we win? I'm saying we're going to win it, you know, win the suit or whatever. But with that proposed budget, will we be able to recoup that from the um the money that they owe us for our legal fees and so on, so forth? Well, um, I think that really would be determined by these. This is a matter that's going to arbitration, and there's a panel of uh, judges that are going to decide this who are going to act as arbitrators. Um, I, I think that uh, that is something that has to be determined in the litigation. I don't really want to say uh, voice an opinion on it for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not trying the case. And two, I don't want to uh, prejudice any claims in the case uh, publicly. So um, I know that we're going to try to get all the money that is owed to us uh, that hasn't been paid over the course of several years, which is substantially more than um, the legal fees that are um, being budgeted here. Um, so we'll have to see about that. We, we, don't, we don't really know. Um, how the arbitrator is going to rule on that. Now, Rose, uh, Kill uh, Rose uh, Tassoni Donardo, she's involved in the litigation uh, directly uh, with direct oversight on it. I don't know, Rose, if, if you have anything further to add or any corrections to make to what I might have said. No, not really. Um, it really depends on, on um, and, I, and I don't really recall uh, at this minute, but we can get back to you on it, uh, Councilwoman, whether or not the parties asked um, for attorney's fees. I don't believe um, there's a certain types of cases where you would ask for attorney's fees if you're prevail if you're the prevailing party. I'm not so sure that this is that type of case, but I'm happy to check um, for you and let you know um, definitively. Having said that, just because you ask for something and just because it is that type of case does not mean you get awarded attorney's fees, even if you win. Oh, okay. Um, 
Okay, I just wanted to, I mean, even it, um, I just know sometimes we don't ask, we don't get it. So I was just wondering if we had at least asked for it because we need all money on that. So, you know, if it's not, can we get, <laughs> I know this is like, this is an arbitration, but if we have it and you said something that we, you know, we probably might not get back and we're, you know, it, it's a, it's a rough road, but I was just saying, you know, I'm just looking at it like we need everything. So, you know, why not write it in? I was told if you don't ask, then you might starve, you know? So I'm hoping that, you know, this, this number could at least, that something can happen with that number. That's all I want to know. And I appreciate you answering the best way you can. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm done there. And we can follow up on that and let you know for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and, um, and, and I, I just a follow up question on, I guess, the finance, um, I guess I know the finance department has yet to go. Um, just from a legal perspective, has has uh, sheriff cells been re-implemented? Is that now starting again, or is it still it on is. call? It is okay. starting up again. Yes. Okay, so that legal expense will start start to build again. Correct. And over the past year, since there weren't any sheriff cells. I guess there was there a tremendous savings in that department, or was there still a, a expenses? Savings. Um, well, I, I mean, I'm sure there were savings in um, in terms of filing fees. Uh, you'll see. I think I think we have them here somewhere in one of the the slides here. Yes, we do have a future. Um, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Johnson. We do have. Um, a future slide that speaks to sheriff sales okay. speaks to the question okay. you presented by your office. Okay. I, I don't want to jump ahead then. Um, very, very well. Um, so let's in, hop to question seven. Or wait, uh, question. Question seven. Are you are you done? <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. So question number eight. Um, talk about the approximately $25,000 budget for consultants for the Ethics Commission. So um, this involves a little bit of history. Um, years ago, the city law department uh, handled ethics uh, matters internally. Um, but I think the Ethics um, Commission was not nearly as active back then. Uh, prior to my arrival um, by my predecessor, it was determined that uh, they would try using some outside counsel to um, be involved, uh, and they have done so. Uh, and uh, that outside counsel budgets about $25,000 a year for that. Um, this allows them, um, because ethics, a lot of our ethics um, complaints aren't just about, you know, individuals in, in the uh, who are uh, employees, just regular employees. A lot of it is about, you know, people are a little bit higher up on the, on the food chain uh, and are kind of like our clients. Uh, so we're in the odd situation of, you know, we would be in the odd situation of, of investigating and prosecuting ethics claims against people that are clients that we render advice to. So, uh, so it's been determined that uh, that uh, we would use outside counsel. Uh, they reorganized uh, and and redid the roles. Uh, they've uh, handled a number of pretty high profile cases uh, and made determinations over the last several years. One this last year uh, was prosecuted uh, and uh, resulted in uh, a finding of ethical violation. Uh, and uh, we've and they uh, dealt with uh, two additional ones. Okay. All right. Uh, now turning to question number nine, can you discuss the uh, approximately sixty thousand dollars for court costs and fees? Okay. So this is uh, pretty much the same answer to the the question that. Uh, we always have about it. it uh, these are the things that uh, we have to pay in order to proceed forward with 
um, sheriff jails and also with other uh, court proceedings. So uh, if we get the next slide, maybe. Um, but it, I guess the next question was asking um, how we've recouped these costs. Um, well, as you noticed, it, I think you were talking about uh, sheriff sales and how they were yeah. coming back and, and they weren't uh, so much last year. You'll see from last year that, you know, we didn't spend very much on sheriff sales and we didn't collect near as much. Uh, and uh, we spent, uh, I guess, uh, of costs $49,000. Um, but we uh, recouped and we recouped uh, 9,000 of it. Um, and the total amount was collected was 232,000. That's the revenue that Councilwoman Walsh and I were talking about uh, that's being recouped. Uh, and um, then this year it's um, um, more. So we are recouping more costs um, compared to the amount of uh, filings we've made because um, we are starting back the process. Okay. And it's only been, when did the process start back? Was it April 1st? Is that the date? Correct. Okay. Got it. Yep. No questions on this council. I would like to turn to question number 10. Uh, can you discuss approximately 66,000 in uh, miscellaneous? memberships and services. Okay, so you have to register to be a member of various bars like Delaware Supreme Court, U.S. District Court. Um, um, we have um, attorneys continuing legal education fees. Uh, at some point in, in our existence, maybe we'll be able to start going to conferences again when travel is permitted uh, or encouraged. Uh, that may or may not be over the course of the next year. Um, we are lucky. Uh, that we are members of the Delaware State Bar Association and the city pays for that. That gives us a lot of uh, information, publications and connections that assist us uh, and our lawyers in the practice of their law. Um, our practice is a municipal lawyers practice. So um, we uh, are participants and members of the International IMLA, uh, International Municipal Lawyers Association. Um, we also are uh, labor negotiators. Uh, uh, even though some of our negotiation is, or many, much of our negotiation occurs outside of uh, our shop, um, there's oversight that we're involved in, and we provide counsel advice to our outside uh, vendors, but um, we also do some negotiation within and provide services to HR department. Um, we file litigation in district court, which uh, gets appealed to U.S. Court of Appeals, and so our members of our, many members of our bars are members of our law office, are members of the bar of the U.S. Court of Appeals. Um, our paralegals also are members of associations and uh, have uh, education that they have to keep up with. Uh, and then, um, so these are these are the things that uh, this line pays for. Do you, um, when you're recruiting attorneys, do you um, do you ever discuss these extra benefits? Because it's my sure. understanding, state doesn't provide these benefits. Uh, I, can, I can attest that they don't, or at least they didn't when I was there. Uh, <laughs> I worked for the state for 30 years and I loved working for the state as both a prosecutor and an assistant public defender. Um, but um, we would occasionally get little, you know, half prices for things uh, the bar would give us, but um, mostly um, we had to pay uh, our own way. Uh, so this is definitely one of those uh, things that we uh, that I appreciate uh, coming here uh, as a lifelong civil servant, and um, and I think it is a it is a, a value to people. Um, so yes, we do use that to try to uh, bring folks in. All right, and can you discuss how your training compares, I guess, to other local? jurisdictions in terms of could you yeah and can you move to the next the slide for that if you could someone um so um i think there's a specific slide that i believe there is yes. next slide okay there it is so it's kind of a hard question to answer um 
that's going to, I mean, to have a real full answer, we would have to research and find out from, you know, uh, other places. Um, Newark, for example, their attorneys, their city solicitor is contracted. Uh, he's not an employee. So their contractual services for those um, positions, they have a city solicitor and a deputy city solicitor. And it doesn't really talk about their training as far as I could tell when I was looking uh, on their budget. Um, and uh, the county uh, is not really a municipality. Um, they do have training. It looks like they have training. Uh, we looked and it said it's like $27,000 um, across um, 10 lawyers like us, uh, but we're not quite sure what it's referring to. Our training uh, is, a, is payment of CLEs. And once again, uh, as you pointed out, uh, Councilman Johnson, uh, that um, is not something that is paid everywhere. I was lucky at the public defender's office because they had their own in-house CLEs. We put them on ourselves. And uh, it was great because it you could get everything, you get all of your credits. Um, but if it weren't for that, we would have had to pay. And um, I had to pay for many years. So this is something that uh, is paid for uh, by the city. It's a great asset, it's a great perk um, because CLE credits are not cheap as, as you know. Yes, indeed. Um, all right, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, and now moving on to just the organizational chart. Just, is there any um, further explanation or comments on the chart or how your department runs? I, I think it's that we're a small department. Um, um, we, uh, uh, this has been the same, it's been the same organization for, for a bit. So uh, I think that pretty much speaks to how we, we operate. Okay, thank you. Um, and this time, Solicitor Goff, I'd like to see if there's any comments from members of the public. Um, seeing none, then I'd like to turn it to members of council for any final comments or questions. The legal questions always come up during council uh, proceedings, but uh, I, I guess there's none at this point in regards to budget. Um, so again, if you have any brief closing statement or remark, Attorney uh, Goff, the floor is yours. All right. So I just want to say thank you again for the opportunity to present our budget. Uh, and I submitted to you and respectfully act, ask that uh, it, it get a favorable um, recommendation. Um, I also want to let council members know um, that um, you can always reach out to me. Uh, or any member of my department. Um, and uh, my phone number is 576-2185. Um, we don't just have to talk on Zoom calls or council meetings. If you have a problem or need to communicate or anything comes up, um, we're here to provide legal service and get things to you. Uh, and do the things that we're supposed to do. That's why we hire these outside counsel so that we can actually do the job uh, of day-to-day -day representation of the departments uh, and agencies of the city. So uh, I welcome you to reach out to me or to uh, my deputy city solicitor um, if you have any questions, concerns, or needs. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. And um that I would like to uh, appreciate you closing it out a, a pretty uh, pretty full evening. Thank you very much. And now at this time, I'd like to thank uh, OMB, uh, the department heads, and WITN, and members of the public for being engaged in um, you know, viewing these budget proceedings. The next budget hearings are scheduled for this upcoming Monday, April 26th. Um, there are some uh, pretty important um, matters to go over. Uh, we start with revenue projections at 4.30 p.m., followed then by finance department and then uh, department of IT. So please tune in to WITN channel 22 to watch the meeting. 
can also watch online at WITN22.org. Um, there's also budget information available at our new budget website, um, WilmDEBudget.org. And with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. All right. All right. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right. Good night. Well, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. See everyone next Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Steph.